Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris from Felgar Productions, and I know we all got really excited about the Warlord Games Epic Waterloo box. Probably a lot of us bought it, and it's been sitting on a shelf for a while. So, what do you do with it? How can we speed paint this? Now, what I have in front of me is, in fact, not Warlord Games Epic Miniatures. These are 3D printed, same scale, 13.5mm, epic scale. Uh, they're from Europe Asunder by Turner Miniatures, and I've 3D printed them a little under 60 millimeters wide uh, and a little under 20 millimeters deep, so they would be the same. And I have gone ahead, and these are British Peninsular Infantry. We're going to be speed painting them. How are we going to be speed painting them? The key thing here is to start with the primer. So I prime them black, and then I have gone over them with dark rust. You can use any dark red paint that you have. I used an airbrush. You could use a rattle can of a very dark red paint. And I have painted everything on these figures, airbrush them in that very, very dark red. And everything down here in the crevices is very, very dark red. And that's going to be the shadow. And we're not going to be able to paint in between these. If you're using the epic figures, then you're going to want to glue them down onto the base ahead of time. And don't worry about anything on the back of your front row. And don't anything worry about anything on the front of your back row, we're just going to hit the visible things. So things like backpacks on your front row, not going to paint them. Things like pants on your back row, or at least the front of the pants, not going to paint them. We're just going to paint what we can see and reach. And since these are British, we're starting with this very, very dark red base coat. If they were French, you'd probably be starting with blue. Of course, if they were British um, rifles, you'd want to start with a very, very dark green. Once we start with that, we are then going to move on to a quick dry brush so we can see some of the details. Now you notice I've already done a little bit of dry brushing here and then I kind of went back and painted over some stuff. I was doing a little bit of experimentation, it went wrong, I had to start over. So we're going to do a quick dry brush of bright ivory. It's already done over here on this half and this half, we're waiting for it to dry. Then the next steps are following my not patent pending method is we're going to go from the inside out for the deepest portions working outwards and that means we're going to start with the facings these are going to be the south essex the fictional company led by sharp well at some point led by sharp they have yellow facings so whatever regiment you're trying to do check out what facings there are do a little bit of googling and then we're also going to be doing the skin now i'm working with the pro kill range um, i happen to think tan flesh is a little too light shadow flesh is a little too dark so i'm just going to mix them up but whatever flesh tone you happen to like now the thing about these figures is the facings on the cuffs are very easy to do on the outsides. And then you've got little bits of cuffs here on the middle in between each of them. The necks are really hard to do, so I'm going to skip them. Really, it's the cuffs that's going to give you the primary facing colors, and then the necks, uh, you're not really going to see it all that much on these small scale figures. So I'm just going to do the cuff facings. And if anyone gets mad at me, well, my figures are painted and theirs probably aren't, so there you go. I'm probably also going to have to do a second coat on that yellow. Then we're going to go in and we're going to do the skin. Again, I'm working with that mix of the light and the dark skin. And I'm going to try to avoid getting this elsewhere and just get it on, well, the face and the hands. And that's really the only exposed skin that there is. This is also pretty much the only color that we're going to come back and give a wash later on. And don't worry about leaving a little bit of shadow in the resources. Notice recesses. Notice that beneath these fingers I left a lot of that dark red, that's our natural shadow, and between the hand and the cuffs I left a little strip there. So we're going to continue to go through there. The hands, you can see the hands holding the butt of each rifle, and for the back we really only need to do these outer hands because None of their hands back here are visible. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to finish the rest of these hands and also their facings, and then we'll come back for the next step. Now, as an American, I'm very comfortable calling them red coats. That's kind of what we were taught to call British infantry, 
especially during the Revolutionary War, the American War of Independence. So I might be itching to paint the red on their coats, but I'm actually going to hold off on that for a little bit and move on to what is probably the biggest color that's going to be on all these, which is black. Although I'm not going to use black because very few things are actually fully black. I'm going to be using dark neutral gray, aka dark gray, whatever your dark gray is. Now on these figures, what is supposed to be black? There's a couple of different spots and thus this is going to take the most time out of anything. The boots are going to be black, although of course because if you want these to look a little rougher, um, you could have them swap out their boots for maybe some brown boots that they got on campaign. Their shakos are going to be black, including the rim, although I'm going to try to avoid the little palm on top. Uh, switching around over to the back, their backpack is going to be black, and then also their cartridge box, which is this little rectangle here on the back right, that is going to be black as well. If you want to do a variety of hair, you can do some of their hair in black. I'm going to do all their hair in brown because I'm lazy. So grabbing my black, or technically very dark gray, just get on in there and start working on the boots. If you get any of these on the pants, it's not the end of the world. We're actually going to do the pants as the very, very, very last step. But try to avoid the pants if you can because we're keeping that nice dark red as our universal shadow color. This doesn't show up very well on camera, so I'm going to go through. And I promise when we come back, we're going to start doing some brighter colors. Now that the black is done, we can start getting to some of the bright colors, namely the red. Now, as you can see on the sides, although this is a bright color, so it does not video particularly well, there's a lot of sleeve here to paint red. And what I'm going to try to do is lay it down in little ragged stripes. Drawing my brush horizontally from left to right giving just the barest hint that there's a little bit of cloth texture here. Like that. You can also leave a little bit of that dark red still showing in the recesses. On the backs, there's also a little bit of red you can do here. Kind of the, the coattails down here below their bag and next to their cartridge pouch, which has me thinking I may be should have done this red first, but not the end of the world. So we've got some red there. On the front, there's not a ton of red that you can do. You can see I was experimenting over on the right side. Normally you think, oh, well, you put it here in kind of the belly area, but in the belly area, there's the, there's the, uh, the buttons to go. This is supposed to be a backpack uh, strap. Now what I'm going to do is because this is a small scale and I really want the red to shine through, I'm going to break the rules here and put a little bit of red on the chest here when really that is a strap for their pack. I'm also going to go in and put a little bit of red here underneath the neck just so I have some red on the front because this is going to end up being an ivory and a lot of this is going to be cross belts and so otherwise you don't really have a lot of red on your red coats except kind of back there and on their arms. So we're going to do the red and then the, the cross belts. Everyone's favorite slash least favorite thing about Napoleonics. Now's the point where we're going to start painting things by color rather than by area. For an example, I have light umber here, so medium light brown. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to paint the wooden portions of the muskets, but also the hair on most of our figures. I will paint a couple with kind of a dirty blonde. And then also, because I want these figures to not be super identical, I'm going to use the pants to make them look a little bit different. So a couple of these guys are gonna have light brown pants uh, that they've picked up over the course of the Peninsular War. So take my light brown. I'm just gonna do this to maybe one guy in the front row and one guy in the back row. And you know what, we're gonna pick this guy right here. We're going to try to leave that very dark red still in the recesses. 
that's still slightly visible. So you can say, hey, look, there's some shadows in this pants. And there we go. There's some pants. Do I have to do the back of his pants? No, of course not. You can't see it. He's in the front row. On the back, let's pick uh, this guy here. Boom, done. Do I even need to do that leg on the inside? No, not really. Maybe I'll put a little stripe there. With the hair, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to go across and I'm going to do eh, maybe two out of three figures with brown hair. Try to avoid the shako itself. Might have to clean that up if I hit it. And then these guys all seem to have these kind of sideburns. So hit the sideburns there. Finally, we get to the wooden furniture on the muskets. There's this bit that's here in between the body and the arm. I'm going to avoid the top because that's going to be silver. And then the side, which you really only need to do on these side models, and the back. I know it looks like I'm holding the sideways, and I am holding the sideways. Don't be afraid to move your figures around so you can get at all the various parts. And that's it. So hit however many you want in the pants department with brown. The pants are really where you can differentiate these British Peninsular figures. Uh, and then I'll hit the furniture on the muskets and the hair. Now's the point where we're going to start painting things by color rather than by area. For an example, I have light umber here, so medium light brown. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to paint the wooden portions of the muskets, but also the hair on most of our figures. I will paint a couple with kind of a dirty blonde. And then also, because I want these figures to not be super identical, I'm going to use the pants to make them look a little bit different. So a couple of these guys are going to have light brown pants uh, that they've picked up over the course of the Peninsular War. So take my light brown. I'm just going to do this to maybe one guy in the front row and one guy in the back row. And you know what? We're going to pick this guy right here. And we're going to try to leave that very dark red still in the recesses that's still slightly visible. So you can say, hey, look, there's some shadows in this pants. And there we go. There's some pants. Do I have to do the back of his pants? No, of course not. You can't see it. He's in the front row. On the back, let's pick uh, this guy here. Boom, done. Do I even need to do that leg on the inside? No, not really. Maybe I'll put a little stripe there. With the hair, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to go across and I'm going to do eh, maybe two out of three figures with brown hair. Try to avoid the shako itself. Might have to clean that up if I hit it. And then these guys all seem to have these kind of sideburns. So hit the sideburns there. Finally, we get to the wooden furniture on the muskets. There's this bit that's here in between the body and the arm. I'm going to avoid the top because that's going to be silver. And then the side, which you really only need to do on these side models, and the back. I know it looks like I'm holding the sideways, and I am holding the sideways. Don't be afraid to move your figures around so you can get at all the various parts. And that's it. So hit however many you want in the pants department with brown. The pants are really where you can differentiate these British Peninsular figures. Uh, and then I'll hit the furniture on the muskets and the hair. Next up in our tour of colors is gray, specifically bright neutral gray or just a light gray. Now we're going to use this not only for some of the pants uh, at random, like uh, this one. As you can see, this is a pretty light gray. We're also going to use this for the bedrolls. Now I've seen various colors for the bedrolls. I am not a Napoleonics expert, but 
a kind of light gray or off-white is what I've usually seen. And since I'm going to be using ivory for different colors, I don't want to use ivory on the bedrolls. The bedrolls are here on top of the backpacks. And I don't really want to do the side. I want that to remain in shadow. And I do want to try to leave a line in between the two, uh, the bedroll and the backpack. So I'm really just doing the top and the, I guess the, the front or back of the bedroll. Leave that line in between them. And that's it. Legs and bedrolls with this bright gray. Next up is a color I very really rarely use in my palette, and that is white, pure white, bold titanium white. Now, pure white doesn't really exist very often in the real world, mostly because it gets dirty immediately. Uh, thus, I'm not actually going to use a lot of white. My next step is, in fact, going to be to use ivory for something. But in this case, I do want to use white specifically for the cross belts, because I do want the cross belts to stand out compared to the other off-whites and ivories that I'm using. Now, I do realize that there are some straps here of equipment that are underneath and around the cross belts, but these are small figures, so I'm just going to ignore them. I'm just going to hit the cross belts, and they're going to be white. And now you can really tell that this is a red coat. Moving on to the next colors uh, is the pants. Some of these figures are going to have white pants. Now, like I said, in the real world, white doesn't stay white, especially your pants. And we are going to achieve that through a little bit of a wash as the last step. There's going to be minimal washes on these figures. You don't need to use washes, although if you don't use washes, I would recommend using a slight off-white instead of white pants because, again, White pants do not stay white, especially when you're marching around Portugal or Spain. But if you want some parade ground troops, you can leave them white without the wash. I'm going to finish up the rest of this white and come back. Apologies, when I was doing the white, I realized that the little palms on the tops of their hats, the bottom of them for line infantry should be red, and the top of it should be white. So I also use the white on that. We're on to our last color for the pants and miscellaneous knickknacks, and that is uh, an ivory. I'm using bright ivory, and I'm using bright ivory not only for the pants, this guy, and yes, this does look very similar to the white, but when I apply a wash, it will make it look a little different and add some variety to it. Um, but I'm also going to use the ivory on the little, I'm not sure what they're called, the little crossed sections here on the jacket. I'm going to try to keep a shadowed line using that base dark red primer in the middle so you can see the separation there. I am also going to make that look even more different than the white because the wash that I put on the pants I'm going to put up into this little crossed section with the buttons. I'm also going to use the ivory, switching around to the other side, to do the straps on the bedrolls and the packs. I'm not going to use a pure white there because it's going to stand out too much whereas the ivory looks good like that. Just a couple more colors to go, and then we're done. Now, once again, I'm going to remind you that I'm not a Napoleonic expert. So after applying the ivory, uh, also to the uh, musket straps, which I forgot to mention, the last non-metallic color that I have is for the canteens. Uh, now, the best that I could see is that the canteens were a kind of light blue. I'm using gray blue, but any light blue will do. So we are going to hit the canteens. And it's just the center of the canteen. The edge of the canteen, I've seen various colors, brown, black. I'm really just going to hit the center of the canteen and let the, the base color, uh, that, that dark, dark red, almost brown, uh, kind of do the rest of the work. If you want to skip the canteens and just leave them as this very dark color, honestly, probably very few people will notice. However, giving them this blue color does put another pop of color on these figures. Although, 
I've noticed I've fallen into the trap that I love primary colors. This is not my fault. This is history. Uh, so the fact that I have yellow, red, and blue, uh, as my wife always tells me, I love the primary colors. Uh, not my fault. All right. Up last is the metallic. So I'm going to switch out my brush for a metallics brush. And there's really only two metallics that you need to do here. Now, one is the shaker plates. And for that, I'm going to be using brass. Now, if you don't have a brass color, you could use a gold color. And if you don't have a gold color, just use yellow. It's not the end of the world. I'm also going to grab my metallics palette here. I generally don't like to have my metallics on my wet palette because the water can mess them up a little bit. Now the brass is very easy. Just take your brush, get some brass on it, and hit that shako plate. Boop, just like that. And you have to say boop. It's important. Go back for a little more paint. Boop. At least one boop per fresh paint. I need a little more paint on that one. Last one, last one. Boop. There we go. Ah, oh, that makes those hats shake those so much more exciting. If I call them hats, I think the, uh, the Napoleonic police are going to come after me. All right, last one. The muskets. We're just going to hit the top of the musket barrel, the lock, and the end here, and the bayonet. And that's it. So we've got plate mail metal. There we go. Mixing it up. And I'm just going to try to hit the front, not worrying about too much detail here. And I'll finish the rest of the bayonets, then the wash. Now you could leave the figures here if you wanted, but I'm going to apply a wash to some selected areas. Specifically, I'm going to apply Ali's brown wash. Now it's not really brown wash, it's a mix of brown wash, sepia wash, a little bit of blue, and some medium in there. And then I'm actually gonna water it, or not water it down, but dull it down with even more medium. This is a homemade mixing medium. It's half matte medium and half flow improver. And I'm gonna apply this wash to a couple select areas. Number one, I'm gonna apply it to the pants to make them look a little dirtier. Number two, I'm gonna apply it to the skin, especially the face and the hands. Well, only the face and the hands, so that they uh, get a little more detail. Number three, right above the pants, the little strappy buttony things, whatever those are called, uh, to give them was a little more detail and also to help that ivory stand out a little bit from the white. And then finally, the metal of the musket to dull that down just a little bit. So I've got my watered down wash and you can see this guy here on the right, he's got white. And I put this wash on and immediately that white is going to have some more detail in it. And also get these on the boots. Not really a big deal. You don't have to try to avoid them on purpose or hit them on purpose. And this guy in the end, he wraps around. So I'll make sure I'll get in there. And then also the metal, especially the bayonet, because the bayonet and where it connects, we want to have some natural shadowing there. So I'll dull it down just a little bit. Get in behind there with the bayonet. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the rest of these figures and then come back in the morning when they're dry and we'll see how this speed painting has worked out. And giving the wash some time to try, we are pretty much done. Now we've saved a ton of time in painting these by not painting anything on the inside. In fact, you really can't tell that nothing on the inside is painted. I did go in and add some of the same bedroll, light gray color under the bedrolls on the inside, just so when you look down with them, you'd see that bedroll, but that's literally all I did. If I were to go back and do that again, I would do that before I did the Shakos. One other thing I've noticed is my skin tone color ended up being a little darker than I thought. So I'm gonna take my original tan flesh, and I'm just gonna go in, and I already did this a little bit, and hit their fingers, hit their noses, and if you really want to hit their cheeks, 
just to accentuate those facial features. In the future, I think I will just use that tan flesh as because of the natural shadow of the Shaco over their face, going with that darker color ended up backfiring a little bit. Just a quick review because I used a lot of colors here, but I think you could really cut down the number of colors that you have if you wanted to. First of all, for the skin, we're going to use tan flesh. For everything that's black, we're going to use a dark neutral gray, or really just any very, very dark gray. For the metallics, any silver will do. For the brass, any brass or gold will do, although a yellow will do in a pinch. For facings, I used yellow, but of course you're going to want to use whatever facing colors uh, for your regiments that you're going to have. For the red coats, of course, red. For the canteens, which you could probably skip if you were in a hurry, a light blue. And then we get into all of the various colors. Of course, we're going to need white for the cross belts. And then for all the grays, you could... I used various different grays because I have them. You could really just mix the white and the dark gray to taste to get those various grays that you want. Finally, a bit of brown. Uh, for the brown pants, and even if you wanted to, for any ivory, you could use white with just a very light touch of brown in there to make a slight off-white. And we've ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine paints, uh, one of which brass you could do in yellow if you really wanted to, and one wash, which wasn't strictly necessary, but I think it really helped out. And if you wanted to make your own wash, you could mix a little bit of dark neutral gray, light umber, and uh, water or some other sort of medium. So that's it. Speed painting these. It took me about half the time it would usually take to paint these sorts of figures. Uh, normally it takes me about an hour to paint a strip or two hours to paint two of these. It only took me about an hour to do all this, so about half the time. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I'm going to do another one of these super speed painting videos, but next time focusing on 10 millimeter, a little bit of fantasy, a little bit historical. Have a good one.